Okay, as many of you will know, over the last wee while, I've really been humming and hawing about where my next camera purchase is going to be. Um, I've, it's really split into two camps at the moment. It's been the Sony A7R, A7S area, or the Panasonic GH4 area as well. And I, it's both of them awesome cameras. Both of them can completely different but totally similar at the same time both offering 4k sony not in body gh4 in body sony lovely shallow depth of field with the fact you can use a uh, longer focal length lenses for the, because it's got a wider uh, a bigger sensor uh, but at the same time the panasonic having a larger depth of field because it's got uh, a smaller sensor and you're having to use like a seven millimeter lens uh, which would be the equivalent of a 16 millimeter lens if you're doing wide angle stuff um and the the loads of tests been watching it and I cannot decide which one. And even, going, it's not even like, oh, well, one's cheaper than the other. No, the, the Panasonic is just about as expensive once you add on the lenses, which I'd be wanting to get, as as the as the Sony system as well. So it's not like, oh, well, there's a cheaper one in the micro four-thirds uh, region than there is in the, in the full-frame Sony stuff. And uh, I finally, 100%, uh, I know exactly what route I'm going down now. And it's because of... What can only be described as Scotland porn. Uh, just like, oh, makes Scotland look so awesome. Uh, if you haven't seen it, uh, you should have seen it. It's uh, the most amazing trials bike rider, Danny McCaskill, guy from Sky, Scotland. Um, and uh, his latest video called Riding the Ridge, which is this mountain range called the Coolins uh, in the Sky, um, which is an island just off Scotland. And uh, oh, just amazing. And a couple of shots with uh, cameras, which makes me kind of go, I know exactly what I'm, what I'm going to get. So obviously I can't show you the whole video, but I'm going to show you the bits, uh, which is good. I'll put a link to this down below. However, you might not be able to see it in your country. So I might try and do, uh, try and find a link where it is available for you to kind of view at any point. Because there is a download option. However, that's got a limit on how many times you can watch it or how long you can watch it for. But I'll find a way where, uh, where you, if you if you haven't seen it, th this is the making of. Like you can see the actual video, but it's the making of, which is the impressive bit. But I'm just going to show you just now the bit which I find int interesting. To create an so bang straight away in the entrance, I'm seeing they're using a that must be an octocopter, and uh, and it just flies away pretty quickly. Can't see what what cameras or anything that are on it, um, but they're using. It's not like a DJI Phantom. This is like serious gear here. Ambitious new film. Hey, off it goes. Promoter's native home, the Isle of Skye. So much lovely camera work uh, and flying work and how jammy were they for the, the weather that they got. And achieved global viral success. This is awesome. The a Yeah, so the intro, absolutely stunning. Now, let's see the bit which I found interesting. So as you can see from the intro of this, or from the, the back, uh, behind the scenes stuff, it's not just one guy and his camera, there's a, it looks like a crew of about seven or so people doing it. From the local expert, which is and doing some so serious hill climbing, hill walking, with serious amounts of gear. So this isn't a case of, we'll just go walk up a hill and do a quick film. This is, we're going up with camera gear. Look at the size of the quadcopter here. In fact, they mention it just now. Could all be for nothing. Yesterday, you thought it was the most amazing bit of kit I've ever seen. Now, it can happily just see it roll down the hillside. <laughs> <laughs> so, so straight away, you're like, ah. Okay, first of all, bit of gear here. I think that that is the Canon th uh, C300, which is their cinematic uh, camera, I think. Uh, it's hard to tell from this angle, and it doesn't exactly say it, but I think that's the Canon uh, C300, I think. Hold on. Yeah, absolutely. I just found it on uh, Calumet's website uh, or, or magazine. Uh, the Canon C300, which by itself is a 10 grand piece of kit. That's if it's a C300. If it's a C500, 15,000 uh, pounds just for the actual body uh, itself, not with anything else. Oh, oh, that's that's okay. So they're not using your little kind of. Canon 5D Mark II. <laughs> the mist shows no sign of clearing. Oh, we've been up here. Good weather, weather protection. Three hours or so. Okay, the next bit I'm seeing here is we've got uh, the octocopter here, 
but we're also seeing two radio controls going on here. So it may be that uh, we've got one guy that's flying and another guy that's controlling the camera, so pretty intensive stuff, or as he is the director uh, of it, maybe he's just using this uh, controller just so he's got a visual screen of what he's uh, what's being filmed. But I suspect it will be one for the filming, one for the camera angles uh, to get that sorted. Nearly nine hours after setting off. Ah, okay, so straight away, oh, it's, it's such a quick flick, it's hard to see what's going on. Filming can finally oh, begin. I couldn't see, I couldn't see what camera that was there, but that looks pretty darn cool. And and the the shots that they're getting straight away, going onto the GoPro, the clip, also from the flyby just uh, really the side. Kind of get just the first great. On the ridge. Look at that view, look at the views it comes Penguin over and you see views. all the water there. It's kind of oh, special, it almost makes it more worthwhile. Brilliant you Scotland. Put that much effort in and you get the return of those amazing shots. Oh, and boom, boom, here we are. Okay, so this is a close up underneath the octocopter, which looks like it's like carbon fiber, everything. And we're seeing the Panasonic GH3, not even the GH4. I think what this was done, this was all filmed uh, during the, uh, not the equinox, the solstice, the summer solstice. Um, and I don't think the GH4 was out at that time. So they're using the GH3, which didn't even have 4K video on it. But also the little lens they've got on here, uh, I'm trying to find out what that one is. What I think is that it's this one, the 12mm f2 Olympus lens that they've got on there. Uh, because it comes in silver, does that look... So it's like one barrel, a little bit there. I think that's... It could be the 12 millimeter, so which it works out to a 24 millimeter, uh, 35 millimeters uh, equivalent. I doubt it would be anything which is longer. Like there's a 45 mil f1.8, that would be then be a 90 millimeter uh, lens, and you'd have to be so far away. So I think it's probably the widest one that we've got there, uh, the the 12 millimeter f2.8 from from Olympus. So that's uh, oh okay, I'm going to be googling that, but. Uh, pretty serious gimbal that they've got hanging from that as well. This is heavy duty gear. The crew have had a successful first day, but there are still some far bigger challenges. Okay, so this is next shot, he's at the top of, the of this bit called the Let's Inaccessible say, Peak. Awesome. Oh, just look at that shot on his bike. Uh, astonishing. Um, but uh, here, okay, uh, awesome quadcopter going off. Seeing two controllers again, there's the DP, uh, or the, the director going on there, and uh, there's it taking off. Great weather, flying away. So yeah, two people using the controls there. He may just be monitoring it. Uh, it's hard to see, but it uh, looks like they've both got like, the black pearl uh, monitors uh, going on there with the uh, dual aerials going on. Um, but yeah, just look at that flyby. Nice shots. So yeah, for me now, I, I was always thinking like, oh, maybe the uh, Sony, maybe the Panasonic uh, GH4. And I know the Sony is, is the same kind of size and weight and all that kind of stuff, but just seeing seeing this video, this, this video, it should, if it was sponsored by Panasonic, I would understand. Um, because now I'm thinking, screw the Sony, I'm going for this. Because this thing about the Sony, although it may be a smaller body, the lenses are all a big bit chunkier. Um, if you're looking at the total package of the weight and size of the camera, granted, if you want a small camera, get a small camera, but if you're wanting to do filming a bit like this uh, in the future, and I do a lot of uh, aerial stuff, seeing professionals using the GH3 um, with their small lenses, knowing that that is light enough and able to get shots like this, uh, and the depth of field as well. I think with the Sony, uh, you'd have to be working uh, with exact focal lengths, even if you were wide angle. Um, so, and also the weight of the lenses that you get with the Sony is just so much more heavy. Um, so in the end, uh, I think even though the Sony A7S or the A7R more megapixels or unbelievable ISO performance, um, I think uh, Panasonic has won uh, this one. So that's what I'm gonna, gonna get. But I advise all of you, head over to the BBC iPlayer watch the behind the scenes and um, I'll try and uh, find a link where you can see this when it because it only says it's available for 29 days so it might not be available and it might not be available in your country so I'll see what I can do uh, if I can find anything and if I do find anything I'll put the link uh, down below but from here on in it really looks like uh, Panasonic has won for me uh, you know Panasonic wants to give Danny McCaskill hey or, or the director of the video here here's some more of our gear I'm like 
that's that's totally acceptable because uh, he's just sold uh, Panasonic and Olympus lenses to me and uh, no without even trying. Um, so yeah, it's, it, you know sometimes it's all when you see all the stats of different cameras and you think all that stuff. You think, oh, this camera, that camera, but when you see professionals using it, and I'm sure professionals could have got it with the Sony, but I haven't seen professionals doing it with the Sony with a with a helicopter or an octocopter, uh, and and the extra weight and all that kind of stuff. I think my price bracket, once you include everything, including the lenses and the flashes and the weight required for the type of helicopter future stuff that I'm going to be doing, then uh, going with Sony with it being heavier, probably not. So. Panasonic, here I come. Maybe by the time I've actually sold all my gear, it'll be the GH5 out. Because it's taken a while. Like, barely anybody wants to buy any camera gear at this time of year. Oh, it's getting close to Christmas. I'll need to chase that one up. Okay, uh, there you go. Cheers. Bye-bye.